Our next Ignite talk is by Tikolo Makeka. From Lesotho, representing the University of Texas, Austin. Thank you. Afternoon, everybody. I am very proud to be here. I'm proud to stand before you, the cream of the crop, the best there is, the best that Africa has to offer. But I have some questions for you. When you think of the word robotics, what place comes to mind? Okay, when you think of the world, of the word large-scale mass media empire, what countries come to mind? US. When you think of applications changing people's lives, what countries come to mind? Well, I was privileged enough to be in a place where that has changed. For me, the word that comes to mind is Africa. For the past 40 years or so, we've had advents and changes of technologies and advents of new ways of doing things around the world. And during this time, people were not watching that our parents working so hard were sending their children to the best institutions in the world, learning these things in tandem with those who made them. There is a generation of people which you constitute in this room called Zillennials. I don't know if you've heard the term before. A Zillennial is a person who has actually had the privilege of being involved in the beginning of the technological age as we know it with the internet, and you've seen it leave. There are kids today who know the internet and they use it and it's like, wow. But for us, Zillennials, some of you may be just a bit younger, but it's fine. But the essence of it is that you have come to be part of this transition. You are ingrained in it. It is part of the DNA of these transitions. And the beauty of it is we rest all over this world. It's not just Africa. We have 1.2 billion people on our continent. But there are almost half of that number outside of it. The question I pose to you now is, how do we look at ourselves as Africans, and what is the narrative that the world has about us? Who's telling the story? Is it us? I heard the other day that if you go into Central Africa, there is one correspondent for a large media news company reporting on a region that is the size of four states in the US. How are they getting these stories? I was privileged enough to be with a man from Sudan while I was here. Yeah, you could give him a whoop, it's fine. <laughs> this man is doing work where people in Africa, in a place where people are associated with poverty, a place where people think about aid, a place where people think this is the place that needs help. They have created robotic arms that are being manufactured here in the US now and will be used all over the world. When are we going to start seeing the fact that we as Africans are the solution to what the world has been looking for? People say the world is changing. Some people say Jesus is coming. Some people say the world is ending. There is a crisis of leadership in the world. Am I lying? People are becoming nationalists. People are confused. Uh, no offense to our host, but damn, you're president. But hey. <laughs> but the reality of the matter is people are looking to Africa for solutions. The difference is, is Africa the place or is Africa people? When the resources end and they run out, what is going to happen to us? Is our wealth gone? No. I look in this room and I see the wealth that will last us for millennia to come. I am privileged. I am so privileged to be in the presence of the people in this room because the problems that the world is facing, global warming, people are saying that the world has 800 years left. Did you ask any Africans about that? <laughs> Did you? I put it to you that the world is looking to us because there is nowhere else to look. The decision lies on us whether or not we will decide that there are going to be people we invite and they come and they do as they please, as they've done before, or are they going to come to us and say, please help us? The resources we hold, we keep to think and we say money, money, money to trade with them. Hold on. I have the money, how's about I decide how we trade? 
I put it to you that as Africans that we hold the power not just in terms of the resources we hold but intellectually. And beyond that we have borders that were not placed by ourselves but that were put upon us. In this room right now there are no borders. I see none. In this room you are all hearing me. And I come from one of the smallest countries on the continent but you all hear me. I put it to you that if we get ourselves together, if we decide that the narrative of the world, not just the narrative of Africa, will be determined by Africans and for the world. We will not be like those who took and did not give back and left the line of poverty behind them. We will save the world. I see it in this room through technology, through all kinds of developments, through finance. Why are we learning these things? Just to be a part of the system? Is that what this is all about? Hell no! We are here to change the world, ladies and gentlemen. And for those who don't know, this may be one of the last groups in this room for the years to come. What are we going to do? Just call ourselves the cream of the crop, be cool, be everything, oh, I went to Yali? Hell no. I'm privileged to have this group of people from my university with me, and I tell you there's a saying we have in Texas, what starts here changes the world. And I put it to you that what starts in this room tonight, today, over these next three days, will change the world. Yes. Will you change it with us? Yes. I put it to you that Africa is the solution that the world needs. I wasn't finished, guys. But it's okay, it's okay, it's okay.